So the era of Gen 4 competitive is quickly coming to a close, but that does not mean I'm gonna stop dropping this heat. Today I've got a really fun match for you guys. As always, make sure to like the video, the support really helps out and I do appreciate it. And make sure you're subscribed because when Scarlet and Violet come out, the content is about to go crazy. Anyways, today we've got a really fun match against a pretty unique looking team, honestly pretty scary, but let's go ahead and jump right into it. So right from the start, I'm kind of expecting them to lead off with Shuckle. Turns out he actually goes Yan Mega, because I assume they predict me to toss out my Rasta boy. Uh, my four dreadlocks and me are gonna have to get the fuck out of here because of course I do not want to take like a whole bunch of bug buzz damage. Uh, it is to be noted that I do want to get my stealth rock up because of course they have Yan Mega four times weak to rock and there's also a Shedinja on that side who immediately dies to stealth rock on switching. So I'm gonna have to save that for later though as I decide to switch into the Entei. Now he actually goes for a nice little pivot here, ends up being U-turn and that actually does a pretty damn big chunk. Uh, to Entei somehow. Tinted Lens ability definitely out here doing the Lord's work and he decides to go into Shuckle now. So I've seen this Noodly Boy a thousand times. We know it's gonna go for Sticky Web, Stealth Rock, Infestation, Toxic, things like that. But Entei, however, does not give a shit and we go right for the Sacred Fire. Um, now Entei with the Choice Band, I've said it before and I'll say it again, you cannot switch in to this thing. I swear to God, um, you and your children will get burnt as shit if you even try to fuck with my dude. But for real, one of my favorite Pokemon for just a, a, applying offensive pressure. There's really, there's, there's nothing you can do to stop Father. He just makes you call him Daddy. Uh, def most defensive Pokemon in the game gets absolutely burnt to a crisp, and you love to see it. So Shuckle goes down. Whoever ordered the crispy noodles, uh, your order is up. Anyway, now he gets a free switch, decides to go into Infernape. Uh, now this Pokemon is a little bit of a problem to me. I do not want to stay in here. Even though a Sacred Fire will do over half, I obviously don't want to take a close combat. And I've got some perfectly good tentacles who can kind of just counter both of this thing's stab. Plus, I'm thinking a few turns ahead here. Now, I know bringing in a Mon-like Tentacruel uh, a few turns after the Sticky Web is laid down, I can easily bluff the Rapid Spin. Uh, plus, their Spin Blocker being the Shedinja is going to try to come in on the normal type Rapid Spin. Um, so I'm going to try to catch a little bit of a prediction here. So the Close Combat does a decent chunk. And I'm going to go right for the knockoff. Pretty much the only move Tentacruel can learn uh, to be able to hit Shedinja, which is pretty sweet. So I expect to switch into Shedinja here. Go for the prediction. He does actually end up switching in this boy. He comes in with his Halo. Looking nice and innocent. And I say, hey, take that shit off. I go for the knockoff. Um, and of course, his 1 HP have an ass does have a Focus Sash. Game Freak, you should honestly make it so if you use knockoff on a Shedinja in turn 1, I knock the, the Sash off. You can't use that shit. Uh, but I am actually faster because each one of these tentacles does have a running shoe on it, which makes me quick as hell. And that is going to take care of the Shedinja. So that is one way to take care of a Mon that has Wonder Guard. Just tell him to knock it off. And now it's nice I don't have to worry about that thing anymore. So that's pretty sweet. Anyway, in comes an Electivire. Now I have a couple different options here. Um, I'm expecting either Earthquake or just something like a Wild Charge. I'm thinking maybe I stay in and try to get a prediction of him maybe Volt Switching. Um, but I do want to conserve my Tentacruel because I do need to Rapid Spin that webs away eventually. So now that he's got a Spin Blocker ground, that's going to be a lot easier to do. So I decide to switch and I bring in the Mesprit. Now the reason for that is because potential Earthquake play. However, he does make the good play here and goes right for the Volt Switch. Whenever you're playing against a team that has a couple different options for pivots, like a U-Turn plus a Volt Switcher, um, they're always going to get some good offensive pressure and there's going to be a lot of shit going on. So I really would like to get my Stealth Rock up here with the Mesprit as he brings in my Arch Nemesis, which is the Dragonfly. However, this Mesprit is essentially built to handle special attacks, a max HP, max special defense, and calm. So this is pretty much the exact situation I had in mind when crafting this bad boy up in the lab. So I'm able to take a Bug Buzz nicely and a Stealth Rock does go up. And it's not looking too shabby. You hate to essentially just waste a Mon like Mesprit to just get Stealth Rock up. Um, but looking at the remainder of the team, I don't really feel like I need Mesprit a whole lot here. Uh, so I decide to stay in and I'm just going to go right for a U-turn on the off chance that they try to make a prediction. However, he just goes right for the Bug Buzz here and that is going to take care of the Sprit. So also leave a comment if you thought it was Mesprit. I definitely said it like that for like 10 years and I have now seen the way. Anyway, now I get a free switch into the Entei. Again, he does not have anything that wants to switch into this thing. I know I can take an attack from the Yanmega. And we come in here applying that pressure, basically telling him to get his ass a job. So I go right for the Sacred Fire here. No matter what switches in, I believe it does over half. Plus, there's a really high chance for burn, uh, which is why we really love Sacred Fire. So he actually ends up bringing in Infernape, which is perfect because it, stakes, it takes that Stealth Rock damage. The Sacred Fire is going to do a whole shit ton of damage. Infernape, not the most defensive lad in the first place. Um, and that with the choice band is going to be an easy to hit KO, especially after Stealth Rock 
And Entei, at this point, is really not too worried about taking a close combat. Now, I know he doesn't have Stealth Rock up on my side. Um, so Entei doesn't really care about what you know, amount of health he is at this point. As long as I can keep firing off these fires, uh, we're having a good time. So that takes care of the ape. And the superior fire type comes out on top. I got my mullet flowing. Entei with this sweet ass back mullet looking looking majestic as hell. Honestly, they really popped off with the Gen 2 legendaries. Have you ever seen a more regal dude standing here just looking epic as hell? Uh, so he goes back into the Yanmega, of course, takes near half from the Stealth Rock damage, which is amazing. And I still have the tentacles for the job here to switch in. Um, there's not really a whole lot that Yanmega can do. Air Slash is going to be the highest damage. Um, but of course, being naturally special defensive, I am pretty much built to handle uh, this Yanmega. So I come in. Still get hit by that sticky web, but I'm thinking maybe now it's time I get rid of these damn things. I'm sick and tired of coming in and just immediately getting my, my feet stuck in this shit. Imagine being a tentacle and getting stuck in a sticky web. There's so many legs to get fucked up. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to live this next air slash, not get flinched, and go right for the rapid spin here. So that takes care of that. Um, I wanted to save the Entei in the back pocket because I do have access to uh, that extreme speed with the choice band. It's still going to be great utility later on if needed. Um, but regardless, having that, uh, having the sticky web out is gonna make my life just a whole lot easier. Um, so now I just decide to stay and go for a sludge bomb here. I can actually live one more air slash as long as I don't flinch. And it is this thing's unlucky day because he does not get to flinch. And now you gotta get bombed in the face by that boy. So that takes care of the Yan Mega. Um, thing probably couldn't do much anyway having to switch into that stealth rock again, but... Still pretty nice to get rid of it, as now he gets a free switch back into the Electivire. And let's be real here, um, po this is a Pokemon that looks cool and just can't do shit. Electivire, uh, such a letdown of a Pokemon. It was good for like 20 minutes in original Gen 4 competitive, when it was paired with Gyarados every time. But this poor dude just can't catch a break. Anyway, I let Tentacruel just go down here. This thing is pretty much wasted at this point. I thought maybe with the speed boost I could actually do something there. But I just get punched right in the old face, and down I go. But this does allow me a free switch into the absolute threat, which is the boy or girl Banan. <laughs> um, so I'm thinking, you know, I could probably live a super effective attack here, maybe close to my berry range. So I decide to go for a Dragon Dance. I take one Fire Punch, and unfortunately get fucking burnt, which is like, I'm using Tropius here. <laughs> Literally throw me a damn bone. Uh, a burn there was really the only scenario where that really messes up my whole plans here. So... Um, I get the Dragon Dance up, which doesn't allow me to now be faster. Uh, however, I'm going to go for the Substitute anyway, which is going to put me into Berry Rain, because I'm like, you know what? I brought in Tropius. I've got this far. I might as well just go for it here. Uh, so I got that plus one attack, plus one speed. Go for the Substitute here. That is going to put me in range to get my plus attack Berry here, which is nice. Now, again, with this Tropius, the idea is that with my ability Harvest, every turn I have a chance to regenerate that Berry and then grab myself another boost. Um, however, it doesn't look like this turn I'm going to be able to grab another one as he goes for another Fire Punch, and that does take care of my Beanbag. Now, of course, with Burn doing 10 damage every turn, I only have one more chance to attack here. So I'm at least going to be able to just shake the ground, take care of the Electivire, and unfortunately, Tropius wasn't able to do its thing, where actually, I believe his last Pokemon is actually Latios, so I would have been in a bad position there regardless, and that's a little bit of a problem to me here. So, going down to the burn always sucks, you just hate to see your dude go out like that. He's, Tropius is such a cool Pokemon, and I will continue to use it to shed some light on the fact that Tropius got shafted. Uh, anyway, now you're looking at my team, and you're thinking, what's the best option to take care of a Latios? Is it going to be... The mega horn wielding Heracross? No, I decide to bring in the rat because it's not, it's never too late to just burn your joint. So in comes Latios, and with that stealth rock damage, it's looking like Guts Raticate could actually make some shit happen here. So I go for the protect, and that is essentially just to uh, to safely get my flame orb to activate, of course. You gotta get that, gotta get that burn going. He goes right for the Psychic, and unless this thing is Choice Scarf, it's looking like Rat is going to be able to outspeed and have ourselves some little fun with this Legendary Boy. Now, who wins? One big Legendary-ass Dragon Jet, or, now hear me out, one oversized Rat. I go for the Facade, and that is going to be able to take care of the Latios, and that dude was absolutely not expecting that to happen. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why we play the game. Thank you very much for watching. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this match. I had a lot of fun with it, and I will see you guys next time.